uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in South Rome. For those of you who haven't seen the show before, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney. I do elder law. I work at a, very, a firm called Myrick O'Connell, which is actually the biggest firm outside of Boston, but we have a fairly large office with 20 lawyers here in um, West Bros. But this show is not about law. It is about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've been to any presentations I've done here at the South Bros Senior Center, you know Frank and Mary are my make-believe couple and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die. And if they're in South Bro, they want to stay here. They don't want to go to San Diego where the kids move to. They don't want to travel. They want to stay here. So the purpose of the show is to let you know who the people are and what the programs are that you should know about if you're like Frank and Mary and you want to stay in South Bro. You want to stay kind of in your hometown. And so to understand that, because I live actually in faraway Marlboro, mm. I asked my friend Doug Peck, who I know is from South Bro, right, and is right here, mm -hmm. to, to, to really find people who are really, and I'm sure you've watched these shows, so you've seen some great guests. Doug's got a great person today who actually I've also met. Mm -hmm. yep. but, so who do we have here today, and what are we going to talk about? Well, we have uh, our, what's called the, I'm going to use the old term, geriatric, geriatric care, care manager, because mm -hmm. people can understand what a care manager does, I think, pretty well. Right. Rebecca Wild Wesley, who is yes. from the area uh, and has been practicing for a few years here. Mm -hmm. Six years. Six yes. years? Okay. In the aging space. In the aging the space. Name of my company. Okay. <laughs> and your background is? So I'm a registered nurse okay. and I have a master's in gerontology, which makes me a gerontologist. And I also am certified as a care manager, which gives me an extra set of skills and competencies around being able to advise people as to what the best course of action is when aging becomes difficult. Okay. So, and I think that's what we want to talk about today is sort of the, the broad range, not of your services, but the broad range of uh, positions you, f you find yourself in talking right. to different people right. from sort of the more benign to what happens during a crisis. Right. So maybe we'll start off with someone who, you know, uh, just like you were talked about, the family now is, is scattered like so many families are. Right. And mom and or dad is sort of living alone now in South Bro. Right, maybe Frank has and died and now it's Mary and right. she's in the house. And right. she's in the house by and herself. her relatives are gone and her neighbors have all gone away. They're all new people, yeah. yeah. yeah and yeah. she may or may not be driving or may getting, getting to the point where the kids are thinking she shouldn't be driving. So, you know, you, they, they call you for a, a little bit of advice on, so wh what do right. we do? Because we just don't feel comfortable about leaving her home right. all day alone. She's got lifeline and everything else, right. but that's for emergencies. Right. We want to try to prevent those kind of emergencies. Well, and I think if we go back to before Frank died, we might not have realized, or his children might not have realized, I kind of think of the husband and wife as they're kind of propping each other up. Okay. And then Frank dies and she goes down, but mm -hmm. we didn't realize that Frank was doing so much yeah. because he just absorbed that as part well, of the marriage, you know, mm -hmm. that that's what they do is they covered mm -hmm. Not necessarily in a negative way, but right. they covered for each other. In they filled each and other's and deficits. In right. right. And right. And exactly. Right. And then um, everybody thinks everything's fine. And then they leave and go back to their homes and their jobs. And that's when they start to realize that Mary is not doing anything. And mm -hmm. she's more confused on the phone. And when they go do a visit, they realize she's not eating and or she's lost weight. And the doctor's office is mm -hmm. calling because she's not come to her appointments. Yeah. And it might be that generally she's not as bad as what that could originally look like, mm -hmm. but because Frank handled the calendar and the driving mm -hmm. and did all of that. Maybe the bills too even. Yeah. Yeah. The bills aren't getting paid, exactly. Right. And mm -hmm. of course Mary's depressed because Frank's gone. She's sad. Yeah. So she's why, sad. Am I, why yeah. do I want to leave this house? This right. house is where me and where Frank we and I We built this house. Right. Yes, this was yeah. our home. That's we right. raised our children here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yes, that's often when we get involved. Mm -hmm. And so a care manager makes visits in a person's home. We don't okay. have them come to where our office is. Mm -hmm. We go to their home, which is that great opportunity to be able to take a look at what's your space like? Is mm -hmm. it physically safe? Okay. As well as what do you like to do? Mm -hmm. And is is social isolation really mm -hmm. a part of this process? Mm -hmm. And yeah. what's it triggering and what can we do to help with that? Mm -hmm. And I think your services are often one of the first things that many care managers consider is how do we get somebody in the home to be able to be a companion, to mm -hmm. look like a friend, to be able to have those friendly visits and something to look forward to? So why is social, social isolation becoming such a problem? Not just because you know, they have Physically, they seem to be okay. Right. You said maybe sad. Right. But what happens in, with, when somebody is become sort of socially isolated? 
Right. Well, and I think if we look as to why it is people might choose to stay at home, mm -hmm. they may have problems with hearing and it's making okay. it more difficult for them to join into a group. They may have trouble keeping up with the conversation. Mm -hmm. Things may be too loud. It may be too overwhelming. And that feeling of disease is mm -hmm. worse when they're out, when they feel like they're not mm -hmm. coping, so right. they just stay home. It's mm -hmm. just easier to stay, stay home. It is. And, it's and comfortable. I, yeah. It's and I know from my own parents, and you, you, you know, you get older, that's what you do. I mean, you kind of stay with your spouse, right? And, right. and as you say, it's very comfortable, but that's who you talk to. So, you, so even in terms of talking to other people, you lose that kind of skill set. Right. You just don't get you do. you're not used to it. Exactly. You you're lose that skill it. set yeah. and mm -hmm. that talking. And then mm -hmm. they'll say, I really just like my own company. Right. You know, right. I, I'm kind of an introvert, although most older people don't say that. Right. But they just like their own company and they yeah. don't like crowds. Yeah. And so what's happened is they just avoid all exposures mm -hmm. to people. Even the, and, and so we try with, let's expose you to one person. Mm -hmm. You know, let's get someone who can come in and do some things with you and go out for coffee and mm -hmm. read the paper. Maybe we'll go over photo albums. We'll mm -hmm. talk about your family. And that just starts to kind of peel back that how to be social again. Okay, and that person Socialize. helps them do that, brings them out of the house and I into, a, into, a, into a senior center. Right. Or maybe just even meeting other friends that right. they haven't met be seen exactly. for a while. And actually, you'd ask me why is that a risk factor. Mm -hmm. I think I would kind of give the why it happens that we end up getting right. isolated. And then the social isolation in itself really leads to more depression. Depression may start it, and then it exacerbates the depression. Mm -hmm. And certainly cognitive changes. If you're not being stimulated, if you're not talking to other people, if you're not doing new things, your brain just needs to be exercised yeah. a little. So, And you know, you're not taking care of yourself, right. and maybe you don't get dressed every yeah. day. And now maybe you're not paying attention to hygiene and all mm -hmm. of those things. You have to look good when you go out, but if right. I'm home, I yeah. don't need to do all of and that. And you can get up really late. That's and right. And you go to bed really early. And I don't right. need to really eat. I'll just have some toast, and then you right. start to lose some right. weight. And so it is a, it's a, a slippery slope, they say. Yeah. You and know. sometimes they don't even want to go out for a walk by themselves right. because it's no fun to go out by yourself. Right. Nobody likes to walk. Right. Well, they do right. for a little bit, but right. for the most part, it's much nicer to go out to a park or right. someplace with somebody else. Right. You walk around, you can sit and talk, you can people watch a little bit, but you don't want to do that by yourself because right. you've never done it by That's yourself. That's right. And who are you going to come home to? Who right. are you going to come home right. to? Right. Although I think one of the things that you said I think was, it was really great was just also having somebody that can introduce you or yeah. reintroduce you to like the senior center. Right. So yeah. that there may very well be that you end up with a circle of players that, that maybe you didn't see since grammar school because right. you've been because you're Frank and Mary because right. maybe you moved from out of town but maybe you've just been here yes and so suddenly there's folk there's folks that you can kind of connect and you with. know them yeah, yeah. and and yeah. I think that's what we often will use to entice these aren't a bunch of strangers these right. are all your neighbors right and you probably have known them for a very long time and now you're going to know them in a different place. Mm -hmm. Um, I know sometimes people say they don't want to go to a senior center because right. everybody there is old. Right, right. Well, yeah. they're your peers, you know. Yes. You know, um, and yeah. you'll look past that quickly when you see their faces. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right. Yeah. So but it's a, oh, I'm sorry, no, go no, ahead. No, no, sometimes no. it's just that the person is giving just a little bit of a nudge to right. get the person out of the house because right. they, it, when you don't feel well, and right. sadness is a, a really big part of it, Cute. you just don't feel like going out to see somebody else. But right. somebody's going to say, it's work. Let's get out a little bit. You know, we'll right. just go up for half an hour and do something. And it, it right. sort of builds. It's a step-by-step -step process very is what slow. you're saying. You have to be very patient. Rather than, rather than sort of waiting for a crisis to happen, you're getting right. someone used to, right. to doing it. And it's a really kind of preventative. That's right. Medicine. And, exactly. and if you're married and, and Frank has died, it, it's, it's really it's a matter of kind of getting reoriented to the fact that you know you're no longer with Frank, but it's really now looking at the rest of your life. There's a world. And I think yeah. that, that that's one of the hardest things, yeah. of course, if Frank has died, is that you now understand that you will too. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you're kind of looking at the rest of your life, and you know that it ends when you die, you know, so right. that's, right, it is, right. it doesn't end, you live, live, but to be kind of getting going again. Right? right. So can we just talk about that kind of next kind of place to be because there are many people we know who you know somebody mm -hmm. died and then you know they go through all of this and they kind of get over it right or you know but sometimes not but right. th then you're living your life but then you know you keep aging and so other things happen so I, I know from talking to folks myself in the business there are kind of two kind of directions of that there's I've got a physical problem mm -hmm. right or I've got some memory issues mm -hmm. right and so in those situations where either you really have had, you've had that stroke and you've come back home 
And so mentally you're still you're still okay, but you know you just can't get around. Navigate, yeah. Or yeah. from the from that whole cluster of issues where you really got me where where you may have Parkinson's or whatever, you may have some really really now some more serious memory issues. In those cases, what what, what do you how do you deal with those? What do you do with folks? How, how does it work? So as to services in the home or as to general next steps. All of the above. All of the above. Because that's the interesting thing that's to right. me about that's why both of us are right. talking to you all the time. Mm -hmm. Right. Because right. The, well, people will come in with a whole host of problems and you say, the only one who can deal holistically with all of this that's is right. the geriatric care manager. Right. 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 So So I think we had um, spoken earlier about the the companion. I tend to look at the companion as that first opportunity to have a stranger come in your home. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult for many people to have a stranger. Um, I kind of think of companions as paid friends. Mm -hmm. So they do yeah. a lot of the work of building the relationship and kind of teaching people how to kind of get back on the horse again when it comes to being a friend. Um, we, you know, at the same time in parallel, we, we're trying to make, take care of the social isolation. L have you been to the doctor lately? Mm -hmm. Are you taking your medications? Are you eating well? Mm -hmm. What's in the fridge? We try to look at all of that stuff. It's not just the companion. Mm -hmm. And the companion can be part of a lot of those other services. Mm -hmm. They can drive to the mm -hmm. doctor's appointment. The care manager can meet them at the appointment to make sure things are going well. You can go grocery shopping together with a companion. You can plan a meal. You know, you can start to do some of those activities that kind of bring some life to you. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's that very basic, but it's mm -hmm. like, let's tidy everything up. Let's make sure Again, we uh, find ourselves seeking the services of an elder law attorney because now that Frank has died, nobody changed healthcare proxy, nobody did all the rest of that um, formal paperwork that allows the children now to be, become decision makers in the event that that's needed. Um, and you just start to increase, you know, I think we try to get people out, so mm -hmm. it might be the next step once we kind of have that good companion, maybe we look at a day program, mm -hmm. somewhere where they can go and socialize and be with other people and, um, and they're getting a good meal and somebody's seeing them every mm -hmm. day or on a regular basis so they know if they have a sense of well-being, if they've been able to accomplish mm -hmm. more social skills and mm -hmm. re return to that. What is a day program? A day programs can... For um, well, they're like a senior center. Mm -hmm. um, I might even say a senior center on steroids. You mm -hmm. know, senior centers or people can usually get to a senior center on their own. Maybe they have a van that picks them up and they have um, programs during the day. And usually it's not continuous. It's you come in for a program and then you might mm -hmm. leave. You might get a meal together. Um, but if you go to a social day program or you go to a medical day program, those are different programs yeah. paid for differently. But um, it's just an opportunity with a very formal structure. You arrive at a certain time, whether a bus brought you or a family member. You do an activity in the morning, general orientation. You talk about the news. You do some exercise. You might have some coffee first thing. Then at lunchtime, you have a good meal that maybe you've helped prepare or maybe has been served to you by helpers who are really part of your group. Um, and then you have an afternoon activity. Okay. Am I summarizing pretty well? Yeah, it's you a more structured day. Yeah, So definitely. there are activities for them to do. Exactly. I know some of them do music therapy, Absolutely. art pet therapy, therapy, pet therapy. Yeah. Go and on they're, trips. And it's, they're social because the, they are yeah. seeing the same, generally the same people yes. every time that right. they go there. So they're developing some... Uh, some acquaintances right. and some friendships. Yeah. And among their peers, as well as they have caregivers who they may start to build a relationship mm -hmm. with and they can talk to. Mm -hmm. And for the family, then that means that they have another set of eyes who are looking at their mom. Mm -hmm. And to be able to say, she is really, she's making friends, mm -hmm. she looks good when she comes in, she's wearing different clothes every day. Mm -hmm. So you have an additional right. set of reports that come right. back that reassure the family that things are going right. well. Right. And then if we go to a medical program, it looks very much the same except you have a nurse. Mm -hmm. And that means someone's checking your weights and they're checking your blood pressure and they're perhaps making sure if you need to have physical therapy or occupational therapy that mm -hmm. that happens there. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, and sometimes people get their showers at a right. medical day program. Right. And if they're diabetic, it's a good place to make sure blood that- Blood sugar testing, yeah. special diets. Right. But it looks like a nice day. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot of work is going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And we often look at um, adult day programming as an alternative to prolong the amount of time somebody can live at home okay. versus having to go to a higher level of care. If right. that's assisted living, if that's moving in with a family member, if that's 
a nursing home, which is a real last resort. Mm -hmm. But it's an alternate way to get health care mm -hmm. and social care um, to mm -hmm. be able to allow you to still go to sleep at, no okay. at night. And can at can home. you just talk, you mentioned assisted living. Can you just kind of talk about that? So, so for so many people like Mary, who is at mm -hmm. home, mm -hmm. right? And she really doesn't want to leave. She, she not, really doesn't want to leave her home, right? right? But she, but all, but even if she were leaving her home, she doesn't want to leave her home to go far away. Right. Mm -hmm. So her her next best ideal, I keep thinking of a, a old friends of our family who was 96 and finally decided that she really needed. Mm -hmm. She decided she 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 really didn't want to be driving anymore because she was getting neuropathy in her feet, and if she wasn't driving, she didn't want to be in that house. Right. Because she said, now I can't get around. Right. Right. Because a lot of times people. Can't, even though they can't walk very well, the reason that, but for the car is that's how you get every place because mm -hmm. you right. can't right. walk. Right. 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 But but she wanted to stay around, so she ended up coming to an assisted living here in Westboro, the mm -hmm. uh, Highlands, mm -hmm. which she loved. Right. We just had her 98th birthday. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so, but so how how do you how do you because that's one of the things that you do right, right is help people really a When's the time? see When's the wh it? whether you can adapt your home successfully right. in order to, in, or, in order to not move or alternatively right. which assisted living might work and blah, blah. so how do you, how do you figure that out well i think in part it's nice to know what the ultimate diagnoses are that kind of gives us an idea of mm -hmm. what path we're on like what's driving what's driving right. you to need to be moving because yeah. the goal really what is if if you have to leave your home and that's going to be a really hard thing to do you don't want to move and you don't want to move again right. so you want to be able to be on right. the path for the place to next live that will mm -hmm. be where you die mm -hmm. that would be the goal um, which we don't all like to talk about. Mm -hmm. I'm moving to the place where I'm going to die. Right. But <laughs> yeah. in, right. As in, opposed to where you are, which is right. the place, you know, because right. ideally, every, you know, there's that great statistic that 80% mm -hmm. of people want to die at home. Right. 20% of people die at home. Right. Right. About 40% right. die in the hospital. Logistically, it's very difficult to do. Right. Right. Because right. a lot die in the hospital. O right. Others die in assisted living communities, which right. has become your home. Right. 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 Uh, or in a it nursing home. very area. much your home. Right. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. And I think um, I think many people find that when they stop driving, that's one of the biggest incentives mm -hmm. for moving to another place that mm -hmm. offers the kinds of services that assisted livings can offer. Mm -hmm. Independent livings, maybe um, a, a person could move to an independent living and be 55 or 60 years old, mm -hmm. still fully working, but they have meals provided and housekeeping and a lovely apartment and a bus mm -hmm. that drives you places, if that's supportive. Mm -hmm. And that same level of... Um, opportunity is offered at the assisted living level where perhaps now you're getting some personal care um, and you also have a bus that can take you to doctor's appointments to grocery stores which you really don't need because they cook for you right. but you know just the outings people like to go shopping and make that part of their their normal week so I think what we need to know and care managers work very hard on what's the right what's the diagnosis mm -hmm. what is it we're trying to fulfill mm -hmm. why can't homework mm -hmm. but Ultimately, I think a lot of times that person who can't drive, it's very difficult now to be socially involved unless you put full-time care in, mm -hmm. you know, and you make sure they're coming out of the house. And ultimately, you can never really socialize as much at home, even with private care, mm -hmm. even with family, mm -hmm. than you can when you're living yeah. in, in a more congregate setting or a setting yeah. where you're with a lot of right. other people. And you open your door and you're out within a group of people who, you, who are going to look for you and who are going to know you're there. So that's one of your advantages is to sort of make that kind of evaluation along with the family. Right. You're the family's response, you're the person's response, and then decide. But also being in the healthcare field, you know if there is a diagnosis, uh, either physical or mental, that what the progression is likely to look like. That's right. So you're going to look out and say, well, in the next year, this is likely what's going to happen. So let's get ready for so it now. So let's get ready for it now. Right. Maybe time in right. two months to move in. So you right. you try to not make it too early or too right. late. It's the You're right time. Try to timing. avoid crises, yes. in other words, at this point. That's right, exactly. Okay. And I would say care managers are not all nurses. Many mm -hmm. care managers are social workers. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times we operate knowing a little bit about what the other profession does. Mm -hmm. And so social workers have the same set of skills. All of us care managers know how to do a really comprehensive assessment. Okay. We know how to get medical records. Mm -hmm. We know how to read them. Mm -hmm. We know how to interpret what that means mm -hmm. to be able to find the right place. Mm -hmm. And our job partly is to find where are the right places? You know, right. what's the best right. place? And the As right place the for you might not be the right place for you. So right. we need to know that person to be able to give them confidence that this move is 
the right move. Because you're saving, uh, you're saving that person and they're going to so much time. Right. Because, you know, who wants to open what, what used to be in our old days, the yellow pages? Right. Who wants to start going through the right. list of assisted living communities and right. this and that? Right. And, 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 and then start shopping them. And, and looking know that, at ten and know that all, at a time. And know that all, and right. know that all you're doing right. at that time is you're walking in the front door. Right. You're seeing the chandelier effect. You know, oh, that's all great. Yes. You know. Yes. But right. the real question is right. to have somebody with experience with that community that says, oh, you know, these, this may not be right for you. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Which right. is just, it's such an important filter. Right. And I think it's that match. You know that we're. You know, sometimes it's just physical. We're in the home, and then we look at the assisted livings. If you don't live mm -hmm. in a chandelier home, are you going to want to live <laughs> right. in a chandelier yes. assisted living? Yep. So you're trying to match how you decorated your home is probably how you that's where you're mm -hmm. comfortable. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at all of that, and I that's think a great, that's a great yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I and I might also propose that I think that's the benefit of a care manager is that we're in your home and then we're in those facilities. So we know this. We walk in these places every day. We walk into your home. We're very personal. We're not providing this kind of support telephonically. Mm -hmm. um, we know where we're mm -hmm. sending you. Mm -hmm. We know the options. And when we find an assisted living for you, I always want to make sure um, to add the plug, the fact that when a care manager makes a, a, a decision on your behalf or helps you to make that decision, they're not getting any benefit from no financial the benefit. receiving right. residents. No skin in the game. Right. No skin in the game. Right. Our right. game is we want you to be happy. We want you to move once. Right. We want this to be successful. Yeah. That's exactly when I tell folks, I say it's the same thing as hiring your lawyer. Right. right. It's like the person, they've got no skin in the game. They're just trying to help you figure out how to deal with all these other players. Mm -hmm. right. All the other players, they may be totally sincere or not. Exactly. But the point is, th there's, th there's, some, there's some dollars involved, and so it may be skewing the way people look, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas you want somebody that can just look the way you want to be, right. Right. the way you want to be looking. Well, because that elder, Mary, is our client. Yes. And her daughters or her sons, whoever it is who lives in San Diego mm -hmm. and not in Southboro, you know, for that that family, we need to make this right for them, mm -hmm. so that they have some peace of mind. They know things are safe. She's feel she's starting to recover. We know that she's not at risk of falling and malnourishment. Yeah. You know, uh, she's she's re recovering and coming back to some kind of mm -hmm. version of herself, which might be a different version than she was when she was married. Right. She's going to get a chance to find out who she is on her own, right. and what a gift that could be for her family to get mm. to know her in a different way and for her to relate in a different if way. If she's in the right situation. Yeah. You know, that's, that's Lots really true. Lots of moving true. parts. There's, and that's the, the complexity of it nowadays. It's not just, it used to be they'd go to a nursing home if they were really ill and that would be it. That's they don't right. even have, nur not many nursing homes right. anymore. There's right. long-term care, short-term care. And there's even, if you can talk a little bit about continuing care communities. Right. Because those are sometimes a good, uh, you know, place for people who we know are going to have some really significant physical difficulties as they right. as they go through. So it's right. it's really trying to weigh and understand that. I mean, I've been through that with my mother and mother-in-law. It's it's just so complex. You don't know. Not that anybody's trying to sell you anything, but, but they do have skin in the game. People are trying to sell you. They're trying to sell you. <laughs> they want to fill That's beds. That's their job. Yeah. There, there's turnover because yeah. it's you know people are passing away, and so they need to keep it. Full. Right. That's why they're in business. That's but right. you're stepping back and saying, well, maybe this is not the right place for you because because you know the little the little parts that are so important. Right. But don't right. they often get overlooked when you look at the yeah. again the chandelier effect and they have a chef for the the diner oh, yeah, and everything dine, else. So, yes, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, Great dining options. Some have right. farm to table. Some have dine every time. Any time. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, can I can I ask you though because this has been so interesting mm -hmm. that. I don't want to run out of time, though, before we talk about what I think is a really important piece of what you do. Can you talk about the help that you can give to folks if they are, they're knowing that, I don't want to say death is tomorrow, but death is on the horizon. They're in, say, the last year of their lives. And, 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 which we they, only know and, in hindsight. Which you only know in hindsight. Yeah. You never know right. exactly the day That's or the right. hour. Right. We do not know, so That's always right. be ready. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but we kind of talk about it because, because, because once again, while we don't know the day or the hour, what we can be almost positive of now is that we're not going to drop dead. Nobody drops dead. You really have these long, this period right. now mm -hmm. where you may have some diminished capacity for various reasons. Right. So, but you're kind of looking, you're, you know, you're looking not necessarily forward to it, but you're looking ahead to it and saying, yeah. not 
how am I living my life now? Right. If I know that there truly is a kind of a finite number of days left, even if right. it's like a year or you know a year, how do, how so right. how, how how can you help with that? So I think Figure that out. if we have that time, what we like to do is get all the housekeeping done. Mm -hmm. If that's about living uh -huh. in your home and providing the level of services you need, then it you know, and if you're going to your doctor and all of that other stuff is done, we have that out of the way. I think we, in parallel, often try to make sure if there's a birthday, let's get people together. Let's mm -hmm. celebrate that birthday. Mm -hmm. What are the kinds of things we could do to help this family repair mm -hmm. any hurt feelings mm -hmm. or many yeah. misunderstandings? Yeah. Because we know after mom dies mm -hmm. that children will be left, and mm -hmm. if there's not, if they haven't finished their work right. with their parents, right. they're going to carry that on. And mm -hmm. and so I think. Being able to encourage conversations where there's healing done, being able to reconnect that senior if a uh, church was important or some kind of spiritual or faith mm -hmm. life was important. Let's get that, you know, let's pull that back again. Maybe mm -hmm. Frank didn't care about that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. but Mary really did. Mm -hmm. And so let's figure that out That's and let's great. find her a community yeah. Yeah, yeah. or find her a visitor who would be able to come and give her that kind of reassurance as mm -hmm. to what's important. Um, I spend time really. Let's get, let's let's do a party. Let's. What are the things that yeah. seem like a party to you? And yeah. if it's that I want to just have my grandkids come over and I want to be able to hold them in my lap, you know. Um, and don't do it just once. Just right. keep doing it. We right. should we should enhance those times for families to be together or best friend mm -hmm. to connect. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we might even do some work with helping them to write their history. Mm -hmm. You know, what how to do a reminiscence project to be able to tape a, a, a story about mm -hmm. how you and dad mm -hmm. met, you know, mm -hmm. and that the family would like to know that. What a um, great idea. Yeah, it is. I hadn't heard that. Yeah. You know, that yeah, we, I think of you more as sort of in the clinical side of that's things. That's right. But there's this another the big stuff. piece that's, yeah. yeah, that's very, very important right. because there's often a lot of unresolved issues. Right. You know, with, with family. That's and for as, sure. Yeah, and aside from the unresolved issues, which might have more clinical expertise, the mm -hmm. companion right. is a perfect person to say, "Tell me about when you and Frank met." Right. You know, right. and they might be willing to to record that or to take notes. Mm -hmm. You know, the companion is really a person who can really help to mm -hmm. um, to be able to to be the friendly person. They right. don't do the hard work. Right. And right now, I have somebody who's um, at the end of her life, and her companion. Even though we have 24-hour care mm -hmm. in, a, in a living situation that's very supported, we still have her companion come in. Mm -hmm. so this person's been her friend right. for two years. Yeah. So that person's a constant, and we introduce that person early yeah. in order to be able to make the quality of life better. So that's right till the end. You know, that's, yeah. that's what we hope for. So that's your ultimate goal is quality of life. Absolutely. So, because Absolutely. we know it, it, we, they're getting close to the end. Right. And, just and it's the quality of their life. Their it's life. their standard, right. not my standard. Right. Yeah. Right. And the yeah. point is to accept the fact that you you close to the end is mm -hmm. doesn't mean like in an hour. Right. right. It means like not hospice long. maybe. Right. Not even hospice. Right. 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 But it might be though you're going to advise when hospice might Absolutely. be important Absolutely. and or the new I mean the new piece now to the puzzle that keeps getting more pieces is palliative care. Right. Right. To right. say okay, mom's has cancer or whatever, but we're not right. doing any treatments anymore, but she still needs some palliative care. That's bringing right. that in and knowing treating what that- symptoms, Treating her symptoms. Treating her symptoms, making her comfortable, yeah. but knowing what that entails and how to explain it to the family. Right. Because I know some family members say- It that sounds it, like- It sounds like sounds it's like the end. It sounds, sounds like, like hospice, right. it's gonna be the end. Right. You know, why don't we continue right. doing that? Those are, those are tough issues right. to deal with. And I think those are terms, palliative care, hospice, we talk about early, before yeah. it's necessary. So okay. that people get used to that idea. They mm -hmm. hear it, they understand what it is, oh, it's not for me right now. Yeah. But then they remember when you bring it up again, maybe this now is time to talk about that. So yeah. sometimes we're a bit of a broken record because yeah. we know that if we can lay that language down early on, that they can start to see that maybe that is, it's time now. Mm -hmm. um, and they've had time to think about it mm -hmm. and make it part of their experience. Yeah, it's not a crisis anymore. It's, it's, right. it's, they want to be thoughtful about this. Right. Exactly. And you can say that you re you're really trying to enjoy every day. Right. Now, you're Absolutely. Not, you're not, right. I th and I think that's where you, you can be so helpful in terms of getting the family wrapped around the fact that, look, it's about living the rest of your life. Right. It's not about becoming immortal. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And so let's let's focus on that. Right. right. As opposed to this other. I mean, I was, I was very fortunate to watch. I had an old partner from Marlboro, my partner David Gavois, who had a di got a diagnosis 
had cancer. They opened him up and they said, sorry, this, you know, you're not, the good news is it was slow growing, right? And so you, you've got some more time. The bad news is it was slow growing, so we can't do anything. Mm -hmm. And he just accepted that and said, okay, I'm gonna live the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I don't want a lot of interventions. Mm -hmm. I, don't want, I don't want chemo if it's gonna make me nauseous. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna live the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And, and in hindsight, you know, you talk to him, you talk to his wife, you talk to the, the Mary and his, mm -hmm. this wonderful woman, they were so close. Mm -hmm. They said it was great because it was mm -hmm. this great relief because we had all this time to really, really be together, mm -hmm. right. you know, which is, yeah. now I'm just going to mention one thing. So I was, I was, call, I was calling, the other, I was calling Rebecca the other day mm -hmm. and, and I said, you know, we need to be getting together. Oh, I need to stop at the store. I need to pick up. Is it toilet paper? <laughs> I promised this this woman. It was kind of like in the in the yeah. in the last yeah. not the last day, but the last weeks of her life. Yeah. That I promised her, you're never going to run out of toilet paper. <laughs> That's a great job. That it is. Here, it is right. Yeah. This has been great. This, this has been like, terrific. Yeah, this has been a good... I Ending like with toilet paper. That's <laughs> really good. I'm not right. sure. Things we'll change. remember <laughs> that. We'll <laughs> the toilet paper right. episode. It <laughs> just shows you to what lengths you will go. Absolutely. <laughs> we do. We do. We do, absolutely. So, Doug, once again, a great, a great <laughs> guest. A great guest. And well, I, and I appreciate her, yeah. your input into this because of, you know, because you're dealing with this kind of stuff mm -hmm. all the time yourself. Yep. Rebecca, thanks a million. Yep. It's this fun. Thank you very much. For people to really kind of understand this kind of role, which can be a really important role in people's it lives. Is. It is. Really, really right. important. Yeah. So okay. thank you. Thanks, yeah. Doug. You're it's welcome. Great. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Southbrook. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.